topics that I will be discussing. Um, as we all know, on the mobile space, price of downloads is increasing. How do you work and obtain a LTV that is important for the business with these costs? What are we doing as, as a company to optimize and promote that? So, so some of the statistics here, as you guys know and can see, um, just like on Facebook development, uh, on Facebook platform development, CPI is rising right now on mobile, specifically on iOS and iPad. However, on Android, not the same, <laughs> not the same cost per install. Though, us as a company, we made some uh, strategic changes in terms of what we are developing and launching, and we have launched quite a few titles on Android. We are seeing really, really strong RPI and LTV growth on Android. Also, we're seeing very similar retention and re-engagement for our users. What we've done is uh, dual uh, launches on iOS and Android. You guys can see that CPI is very different. However, for us, our one day, three day, seven day retention, our re-engagement patterns almost very much at par. Something to consider. Of course, as Android starts to become more of a prominent player, CPI will rise here as well. However, for us, this year was really key uh, to, to launch all these titles there. We saw very strong growth. However, on iOS, what we're seeing, you guys, this is a three-year, year-over-year comparison. The install base on iOS, specifically in the United States, is becoming more and more saturated. Also, the RPI is increasing. This basically, what does this represent to us? This says that it's very hard to compete. The products that are on iOS in the top 300 are very aggressive, and getting in the top 20 charts, top 50, is very expensive and very difficult to do. So some of, some of the things that I've been managing at Play First is product managing. Um, a cross-promotional network that has intelligence and can point the right content to the right people at the right time and provide the correct incentive for those people, not users, but people that will show a value proposition for people to click and install or retain or various well, things in a decision tree that a person uh, goes through when they see information and content. So for us, we decided to have a proprietary engine that we have developed. This engine works on various platforms and devices and identifies users looking back at the user history and provides the content information at the right time. Some of the ads that uh, we show to our users, this is an example, and so it really depends who you are, like I mentioned, and what your motivation is there at that moment when you're in the product. Do you, is there a threshold where you're about to purchase? Is there a threshold if you're about to uh, leak? Is there a threshold that states based on some of your user actions that you'll be more likely to click, have a positive click-through rate and ultimately convert going and installing another product? So some of the, that information we do look at in terms of regressions and analysis, and we feed our engine within the cross-promotional cross tool to provide that type of information to users. Also, uh, some of the things that we want to make sure that we leverage is re-engagement features and tools. Also an intelligent way of providing re-engagement to um, reach to your users is important. It's not necessarily, we're getting to an age where it's not uh, cookie cutter anymore. You have to provide the right information to the right people who will be more, more likely to uh, see this as a value rather than uh, something that they want to delete or remove. So we also use a lot of notifications but that are personalized and show things that, to people that are interested in the information. For us, cross-promotional network is important, but if you don't have a very high DAU, 
uh, cross-platform, uh, cross-portfolio, cross then it really, cross-promotional network doesn't really help. So it's important to keep re-engagement KPIs up, DAU up, and only then a cross-promotional network is important. Or value adding. So this is a kind of a case study or a good example of what, how, how you can optimize a cross-promotional network. So if you guys can see, in December, yes, we had a high click-through rate. However, the people who were clicking through these ads, they didn't find, for whatever reason, there was no install driven from there. As we've been optimizing the logic and the algorithm and the content and even to the point of like, where's the X button, what, what color is the, and what's call to action is in that particular ad, we start seeing results, we start seeing improvement in click through as well as in install, eventual install. So the way that we run our products, our revenue generating products, our actual games, is exactly the same way that we run our cross promotional engine and, and our team there. And that is live operation. We hypothesize what is based on data, hypothesize what we want out of, uh, what we want to achieve, then we measure, we iterate, and again, constantly optimizing, constantly improving, constantly adding more information of who our users are, and not necessarily their personal information, not at all. It's more like, what did they do in the product? What did they achieve? What level did they uh, reach? What soft coin balance did they have? What hard coin balance did they have? What did they, mon did they monetize, did they not? Breaking users up into very specific and distinct segments and seeing, more importantly, what they have in common and what they don't have in common and bucketing them, providing them, those particular segments, the information that they're interested in. Rinse and repeat. <laughs> Based on that, we have seen a strong DEU growth. Uh, it's not just the cross-promotional uh, network. You have to have a great product. You also have to have very strong retention hooks as well as uh, a strong economy in the products. Uh, and strong by not being too aggressive where you see churn, but as well as something that is interesting and fun for users. Um, so based on that, we have seen in the past three years very tremendous growth in our overall portfolio DU as well as our revenue. And as you guys can see, there is not exact data here in months, but uh, this is just an example of what our paid QA versus our organic QA is. And uh, organic is cross promotion, a very large amount, but also is based on our chart rankings and uh, brand equity, basically. And this is basically uh, an example of what happens where you have cross promotion. So right here is a good example. We had it turned off. For, for technical reasons, but uh, a number of different reasons. The, the fact that we not, did not cross-promote within that time period, we saw a significant drop in rankings, as well as, obviously, significant organic uh, decline. Once we have optimized it, we have very strong chart rankings, as well as driven by mostly organic chart. And that is basically my speech. Thank you very much for having me. Um, if you guys have any questions, please let me know.